WebAssembly is a low-level assembly-like language that can run in web browsers and give us near-native performance, and not only that, it also serves as a compilation target so that languages like C, C Sharp, Rust, and Go can run on the web. This video isn't going to be a deep dive on what WebAssembly is and its benefits, but I think it's at least worth noting that WebAssembly isn't some sort of universal performance boost for JavaScript applications. JavaScript engines today are highly sophisticated and make all sorts of optimizations, and so in many cases, the use of WebAssembly might not even lead to any increased performance at all. The general big advantage WebAssembly does have though is that it results in small pre-compiled files that can be quickly transferred over a network, resulting in potentially better startup times than a pure JavaScript approach, which would likely result in larger files that still need to be passed and optimized at runtime. And for computationally expensive tasks, WebAssembly will likely outperform JavaScript more consistently. I have one of these computationally expensive tasks that I'd like to experiment using WebAssembly with. In brief, I have this wave function collapse algorithm that I implemented in JavaScript that I'm using for terrain generation in a game I'm building. The general idea is reasonably simple. You give it an example set of tiles. It infers some rules about which tiles can be placed next to each other from that sample input. And then it generates larger sets of tile layouts based on those rules. But even for a reasonably small set of tiles, the JavaScript implementation can take several seconds to run. So I've been learning about WebAssembly over the last few months, primarily with Dominic Elm's Learn Wasm course. This isn't a sponsor, I just wanted to shout out a great resource that has been highly valuable to me. I've been learning the WebAssembly text format, which is essentially a way to directly write assembly-like code for the stack-based virtual machine that powers WebAssembly. However, it is also possible to use a higher level language like Rust or Go that are then compiled to WebAssembly bytecode through an intermediate representation. That may end up being the smarter choice in the end for my wave function collapse implementation, but at least for the sake of learning, I'm going to give it a go with the WebAssembly text format first. But the first step is to just get the basics set up, and that is what we are going to focus on in this video. We need to be able to write some code in the WebAssembly text format, compile that to the WASM bytecode, load that compiled binary into an application. I'm going to be using Angular here, but the general approach will be the same regardless. And then call exported functions from that WASM binary from our JavaScript code. This is an extremely basic implementation of a module that exports a single function using the WebAssembly text format. Now we need to compile it into the WebAssembly bytecode. And to do that, we can use the WebAssembly binary toolkit Specifically, we'll be using the what to wasm command. You can follow the instructions in the repo to set up the toolkit on your machine. And then you can run the what to wasm command on your WebAssembly text format file. This will result in the compiled wasm file, which I'm just going to dump into the assets folder of my application. Now I can just load it over the network like requesting any other kind of resource. And once I have the array buffer of bytes from that wasm file, I can call webassembly.instantiate with those bytes to create the WebAssembly module. And now I can call any of the exported functions from that module in my JavaScript application. Whatever is happening inside of that function is going to be happening using WebAssembly. And then we get the result delivered to our JavaScript application. So that's the basic idea. Now I just need to figure out how to convert all of this into an assembly-like language. Whether I succeed with the WebAssembly text format or I end up using something like Go instead, I'll definitely create another video on how that ends up going. So if you'd like to stick around for that, drop a subscribe before you go. And if you don't mind dropping a like for this video too, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here for the next one.